This is one that comes straight out of uh, uh, the, the NCARB, uh, the current NCARB exam. Uh, I usually only do 10 for this, but um, when I was kind of glancing at it, I thought, oh, this is kind of a nice one. We'll just do it as a quick little bonus thing because uh, I think gets at a couple of uh, useful concepts. So this question is, uh, buckling of a column can be reduced by which of the following? Check all that apply. Uh, so we look down through the uh, possible answers and we say, well, all right, increasing the size of the member. So the size of the member, that seems reasonable. Rotating the column, uh, that sounds suspect to me. We'll come back to that one. Bracing the column, that's absolutely going to work. So I'm going to say increasing the size of the member, uh, bracing the column, those are both good answers. Changing the type of end restraints, that's also probably going to be very helpful. Um, reducing the length of the column, well, that's going to be hugely helpful. Uh, reducing the R, the radius of gyration. Actually, that one's sort of a little trick. It would actually, you would want to be increasing the R for that to be useful. Uh, so rotating the column, what's the problem with rotating the column? Um, in order to understand the process here, uh, like I have a, uh, let's say a wide flange type uh, column. It has one axis, axis going this way and has another axis going this way. Well, clearly, this is the strong axis, right? That's why we have beams that look like this, because it's going to be very hard for that to bow underneath the weight. If we actually put the beams this way, uh, they would be much easier for that to sag uh, in comparison, right? Well, the same thing is going to be true in columns, that I'm going to have a weak direction of loading and a sort of more robust direction of loading. So in order to figure out whether this column is meaningful, I, at base root, have to do both directions. I have to test both directions because I know I'm going to have to do the weak axis because that's where it's more likely to fail. Right? It, could, it could buckle in the weak way just as easily as it can buckle in the, the stronger way, so I have to test for that. So rotating the column it's, the rotation is already taken up in how I'm actually doing my calculations. So that doesn't really uh, answer us. Increasing the size of the member, that absolutely can make a big difference because now I'm making that whole thing stiffer and heavier um, and uh, I'm making it uh, deeper. And so that can be a, a very big advantage, but I would have to make it in both axes for that to be meaningful. Uh, Bracing the column, if I have this big long column and it's uh, braced at say the halfway point in one direction, if I can be clever about it and have it be braced so that the weak axis, axis is braced and the strong axis goes the whole way, well that's effectively making the overall length of the column in the calculations half of what the other one was. So that's a huge difference. Uh, so bracing makes a, a, a big difference. And then we think about the end constraints. You probably remember these diagrams. Uh, if I have uh, this uh, end constraint where this is a pin joint, then this thing can bow out all the way from one pin to the other. But if this is actually a fixed joint, then it's not going to be able to do that. It's going to stay in a 90 degree relationship for the first um, uh, bit and it's going to do something more like that. And that reduces the effective length uh, of, uh, of the column. And so what that's telling us is that the end constraints, the end restraints, make a big difference on uh, what the capacity of this, uh, of this column is going to be in terms of its buckling. And remember that when you're talking about columns, you're always talking about uh, first, there are sort of three basic types of columns, right? I can have a very short and stubby column. I can have a uh, medium column. And then I can have, I'll do it over here, some really long, slender, ridiculous column, right? And when I'm trying to figure out what calculations I need to do, it's very clear that that short, stubby column is not going to buckle. Right? Uh, it's just, that's just never going to happen. Uh, it just can't. You know, you think of it like, think of a, like a brick as a column. It's, you know, it's just not going to buckle. It's, it might smash, 
So what you would be concerned about is the actual capacity of the material itself. Uh, like that's where I would put all my energy in terms of a calculation. And then I look at this very tall slender column and you know, there's no way that tall slender column is gonna get to the point where the material itself is smashing, right? It's totally gonna buckle before you get to that spot. Uh, it's going to bow out because there'll be some little bit of uh, lateral load somewhere, uh, some eccentricity, and it's going to push that thing out, and that's how it's going to fail. So that one I'm going to be all about uh, looking at the modulus of elasticity and understanding its, uh, its ability to bounce back uh, and looking at the uh, buckling uh, numbers, uh, calculations. This middle zone is the one that's sort of annoying, which is actually where a lot of actual architectural uh, projects are because that one I can't be sure which situation it's going to be so I have to actually do calculations for both of them. Uh, so I just like this one because it starts to talk about a lot of different issues. Uh, you'll see the KL over R, KL over R so um, the uh, ratio that has to do with this issue of the way that it's restrained is the K, the L is the length, the R is the radius of gyration, right? That simple uh, document, uh, simple formula allows you to start judging where and what of these uh, calculations you're gonna need to actually do.